Oh, listen, let me tell you this. Listen, people of God. You must be convinced on what happened on the cross. That's why God, until today, believing so, according to the word of God, they will still quote the Israelites. They have a testimony. Do you know the testimony of the Israelites? They have one testimony, the Jewish people. One testimony to this day. God delivered them from the, from, the, from the slavery of Egypt. You read it in the Bible. God will remind them in the psalm. God will remind them in the chronicles. God, every prophet somehow, somewhere would remind them. Some reminded the children of Israel. Those guys, they will remind. I mean, Stephen in the Bible, they reminded them. They were reminding them of what, how God delivered them from the slavery of Egypt. God never wanted us to forget the cross. Okay? Because that is our cross. That was their cross. That was their redemption. Our redemption is in Christ. What Christ has done for us by delivering us from the slavery of sin and bondages, guilt and shame, that is a testimony that we must ever hold in this life. That's not a lie. That's the truth. And whenever you are discouraged in serving God, that should be your motivated, motivation only. Don't, don't get motivated because you have a job, because you what? Those things are fluctuating. Those things are, are, they are not firm. The thing that is firm is the testimony of Christ on the cross. That should be the main reason we serve the Lord. God was always reminding the children of Israel about how he delivered them. If you read the psalm, it's the stories ever there, in, almost in every book. God will tell them. In fact, even in the New Testament, we, I talk about Stephen. He was given the testimony of how God delivered the children of Israel from the hand of Egypt. It's ever everywhere. That is the story of the Jewish people. They were delivered from bondage. 400 years that they lived there. And God came and delivered them. He saw their pain and their bondage and he delivered them. That is their testimony. The main testimony of the Jewish people is that just what I said. And the main testimony of a Christian, of a, of a, of a Christian faith is at the cross, the cross of Christ, Calvary. That is our testimony. It's not the things we go through in this life. And that's why whether you are going through tough time, whether life is hard at you, whatever you go through, Whatever your, your, your direction of your mind may be on that day, I want to tell you that whenever the enemy has come, when the tempter has come to tempt you, to tempt your faith, to tempt your standing God, to tempt how committed you are with God, do never place your faith in the things of this life except in the cross of Jesus Christ. That is our testimony. Whether I have food or no food, it, it doesn't mean because I don't have food, God is not true. If you read in the Bible, it says Moses said that he went and told the Jethro how many things they suffer in the wilderness. And then he continued to say, but God has delivered them, had delivered us from them all. And then I continue to read in the Bible, it says there were scorpions in the desert. I read it in the Bible. There were scorpions. There were snakes in the wilderness. Hallelujah. So the journey in the wilderness was not an easy one. People just don't know that. Remember there was time that these people were so thirsty unto death. Hallelujah. It wasn't an easy. It's because this book, the Bible said, it could not contain everything that has happened. Therefore, we are given what we can picture and understand. So that we be known, we know how to work with God, with the information. Because no book can contain the whole information of what the dealings of God in the earth is too much. But remember there was scorpion. Remember there was hardship in the wilderness. There was a time they didn't have water. But they were going on the promised land. We too are going to heaven. And in this journey there is a lot of things. But never, never lose your focus on the cross. The power is on the cross of Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't know that, but I'm here to tell you the truth. That's where the power is. Life will hit at you, but if you lose your focus, you're going to drown with the problems of this world. There are too many. We are not even meant to, 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 to carry them 
If you really want to make life easy, live a surrendered life to God. Through problems, he will be with you and he will help you. Paul the apostle who wrote most of the part of New Testament, look at the problem the men endure. The man of God who saw heaven, yet he was in the shipwreck for 13 days. Will he say, where is my God? He allowed me almost to die. We are, they were not even eating when he was in church. The Bible said everything was almost, all life was going to be lost. Except for the angel of the Lord who affirmed to him. And I know he, and, and I want just to make it clear for you that before Paul went on that ship, Jesus Christ appeared to him. And he said, do not be afraid. You will testify to Caesar. And remember that he was going to Rome at that time. He was going to run, meaning that he had the word from the Lord. He had the victory assured. No matter how hard it was there, the word of God was going to be fulfilled. You get it? And therefore, he was focused. In that turmoil, he was focused. And the scripture said there was an angel that stood before him. I'm sure he did not stagger, but he didn't throw away his faith and say, how come God was sending me to Rome? And now I'm in the middle of the sea. And now we don't know what's going on. And it's sure that we're going to die. Because the Bible says that all life was going to be lost. There was no hope that they're going to make it. And then the Bible says that he said that there's an angel who stand before, who stand next to me. It's an angel of the Lord God. Like, I can't quote it quite correctly, but that's how it says. Like an angel standing before me. And he has assured me that there's no life that's going to be lost. And there he went out of that ship. When he went out of that ship, he went out to that island, Mata. And just when he came out, when he was trying to collect wood, another snake beat him. Ah, he's a man of God now. He didn't question his faith and say, God, are you there? He just shook it up because he believed in the cross. It's the reality of the cross. He believed. He shook that snake off. People were waiting for him to die. He didn't die. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So a Christian life, we go through tough time. But I tell you, keep your focus and keep your faith and keep the, your meditation on the cross very powerful. Never forget what God has done for us. When you forget that, you have no foundation. When you have no foundation, your building will collapse. The only foundation is the cross. Other foundation I sinking sent. You get it? What I'm saying is so powerful. Other foundation, there are a sinking sent just like that. Marriages can come and can go. Children can come and can go. Jobs can come and can go. Friends can come and can go. Even your own body comes and go. The cross will remain. It's a testimony to this world. If I hold on to it, I'll make it the other side of Jordan. I'll cross over Jordan. He will make me to cross over. The children of Israel crossed over on land into the promised land. Amen. And you and I, when we hold on to Jesus, the Bible says he is our life and the length of our days. The Bible says he is our justification. He is our sanctification. Oh dear. He is the one that justifies you. Oh, those people. Is it the mother? Who is it? The kids. Okay, they must remain outside, ne? Because I just don't like the noise. Or they could they, let's go the other side. Amen. So he is our justification. So don't allow to have second thoughts on Christ. Then you'll never believe the cross. Not because you are suffering, he's not there. Amen? The cross. And we have the testimony. Do you know what's a testimony? The tomb in Jerusalem is empty. 
He is not there. He has arisen. So no one must tell you any other thing. It is true. All the other people that people worship on earth, they are in the grave. Only one man has risen from the dead. And that is our testimony. If I don't have food, I must think of the cross. Like Job in the Bible, who refused to curse God, who refused to speak anything against God. Because he believed God and the testimony of God. What does the woman say? Curse God and die. Many people have given to those things because of problems. God never said we're not going to go through problems, but he said we're going to overcome them through faith. If you cannot apply your faith, you will remain in your problem, and that's just the truth. That's just the truth. We have to apply our faith because the Bible says that the Gentile may obtain the blessings through faith. That's the scripture. That the Gentiles may obtain the blessings through faith. So we obtain, even the people that came to Christ, they have to apply the faith in order to be healed. No one came without faith and received. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. And he that come to God must believe. Must believe. So coming to God, you must apply faith. That's the only difference we have there. Everyone is facing a mountain somehow. Everyone. No one have a perfect life on earth. I'm sorry, no one. Even if they're driving a beautiful car, uh -uh, it's not true. Even if they look like they are perfect. No. No one has a perfect life. Not on earth. Those things are happening in heaven. Not here because the scripture tells me in the revelation. On that day, when we'll be adopted finally in heaven, the scriptures say, all our tears will be wiped away. There will be no disappointment there. There will be no hurt. Nothing that will make our heart ill. Everything is perfect as perfect could be. That day is just in the future. But meanwhile, the Lord told us that we need to overcome. Just as he overcame. He who was the son of God when he was on earth, it wasn't easy. He was mocked. He was hurt. The scripture says that there was a time he was thirsty. and In fact, he was tired of the journey. Showing the human side of him. But he was in this life to fight. The Bible says that he kept his focus on the crown that was set before him. We also have got a crown. Jesus has promised us a crown that is set before us. This thing is a conviction of the heart. Individual heart. This one is not a family conviction. Is an individual. What do you want in this world? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? How far do you want to go with God? It will not happen coincident. No. You don't even pass your school coincident. Even when people say you are smart, you still have to study. Asho. Mm. And then the scripture tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. 